I've always felt um, especially lucky. And we have been especially lucky. My dad always used to say, yo, how come you're so lucky? <laughs> I could never really figure that one out. That was a tough question. <laughs> but he kept saying it over and over again, all the time. This is a photo of George. This is probably when he was living at our house. And he's sitting at the piano and, um, you know, he's probably playing the, the piano and talking a mile a minute about all of the things that George, because he's got tons of things in his head. Mm -hmm. You know, and there was a certain point when George was like a sort of a normal person. Um, I don't know if he was married to Sharifa at that point. Um, but looking at this picture, he looks like a totally normal person. The voicemail of Brian Lance, assistant specialist at the Homeless Services Center in Santa Cruz, California. Hi, my name is Scott Hutchinson. I'm calling for a, a 65 year old homeless friend of mine uh, about possibility of getting on a wait list for housing or any kind of um, care help. George is an old friend of Scott's. He's homeless. He's an alcoholic. George is sort of a, yeah, a, a problem because he doesn't have a place to live and Scott's letting him live in our car. And um, that's been the most sort of stressful, one of the stressful parts of this whole COVID-19 is Scott feeling like he has to take care of George because George can, is not taking care of himself. The problem with the George thing is, you know, I can go figure out where he's at and invite him over to take a shower, or feed him a meal, but then I could do that and feel okay with just not telling Vicky, but you know, then I'm kind of hiding something from her and if she finds out, then she'll be pissed. She's already told me not to let him be sleeping in her, her car. I'm kind of ignoring that. I just don't want to make it worse and get her more pissed off. So here's the soap, George. Yeah. And then you're welcome to use whatever. I don't usually use the shampoo, but if you want to find something that's a shampoo, you know, you can... You know, I think this one's a shampoo. So clean out my bathroom, and you need to wash the towels that George used, okay? Okay. I can't believe that you just were like, yeah. You hear me, okay, I promise, yeah. No, I'll do that, no problem. Anything else? I think your water's boiling, Scott. Yeah, I got three tea bags I'm not pouring nothing for you. Okay. Growing up, I, you know, saw him as, you know, one of Scott's, like, oldest friends. Um, and my dad, you know, he doesn't really have that many friends, so. You know, my mom will say, like, hey, don't, don't, like, put him in my car. Like, desanitize this, desanitize that. Like, Scott's more worried about him now because... He's always talking, he's saying like he might die, this might take him out, that kind of thing. But not really, it doesn't really change the dynamics that much. Yeah. I'm just okay. kind of stuck in the middle, worrying about him and, you know, worrying about Vicky. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep everybody happy. You know, all, ever since I've known George, he's always, you know, looking for a place to stay that he can afford and um, having a place that, you didn't have to worry about um, was kind of my dream. You know, having a little piece of uh, land in the country or something like that. But a place that no matter what, you could go and retreat to and you wouldn't have to worry about some huge mortgage or some exorbitant rent. So this little um, camping spot is kind of, you know, just whatever the most convenient at this point, most practical option for George. He can't really afford to live in Santa Cruz. I'd seen this spot walking. It's an alleyway that uh, it's city property I guess and um, but it's just all overgrown with rose bushes and it's not being used and so I thought if this was fenced in um, it would be a you know probably be okay for him to 
to sleep there, and so um, fixing it up. In all our areas of our lives. Step one reminds us trying to use the principles of Al Anon and to not react, not to take it personally. This is Scott's path is for him to deal with George. That's George. His trip is to be an alcoholic and um, have a hard time. So I'm trying to step away and not get too upset. For the most part, I think it works. Sometimes not. It doesn't, but that's, you know, prog what is it? Progress, not perfection. Yeah, what do you think? See, and then you got a flap that flops down here. So it's like just the perfect height for your head here. Nice view. Walls all around. A little carpet. A little foam. The Mickey side is like Scott, you know, puts a lot of like time and energy and he stresses out about George a lot. And like uh, Vicky sees it as like a waste of money and like a waste of time and energy and too much stress and like you know I just see it as him like helping out his friend which you know helps him in this in a way because he like feels feels good so yeah we have to get that one uh, out so that um I, I would like it photographic someday it's got mm -hmm. a big timeline but it's dispensationalism and I, I don't like that and that's Willie Dixon who wrote a third of the greatest... For a long time, he didn't have a steady income. He's committed to being a, a painter. And uh, back in the 80s, he could he could um, do a two or $300 painting once a month. But um, the price of his paintings didn't go up as the rents went up. Yeah, he just never wanted to compromise and just get a regular job. He felt like, you know, that was his calling. and. Um, as things got more expensive and him and Sharifa broke up, he was relying on the kindness of friends and stuff like that, couch surfing. And I just admire him as a character and his um, his commitment to not compromising. But um, it's definitely been hard on him. And mm -hmm. I was just trying to help him out one more time. You got the coolest mustache. <laughs> yeah. You don't even have to wax it. <laughs> Beautiful shoes. I love these dogs, man. It's hard um, living life um, thinking about George, you know, like every time you sit down to eat, you know, he's got no place to cook. You want to take a shower and then it's like, oh shit, well George can take a shower. Whatever luxuries you have in your life that you should be able to enjoy, you can't enjoy those fully or you can't even be grateful almost because you feel guilty having it, you know what I mean? This is county and social security, uh -oh. you know, so the basics there, all important stuff. And, deep. and we just um, put the uh, put the toilet seat on and put a chair in and put the walls on. So if you want to go and check it out. Oh, no. Right now. Yeah. Go yeah, push. sure. Oh, don't worry, George is like a cat. He always falls on his feet. You know, always something comes up. You think, oh, man, what's gonna, what are you going to do, George? Like, something always, somebody shows up or... Somebody bails them out, but a lot of those people that bailed them out over the years, you know, they're gone, they moved on, left Santa Cruz, died, whatever. He doesn't have their phone numbers anymore, or, you know, he's used up all the hospitality they're willing to give him for now. And uh, If he asked, they would probably give it to him, but he already feels bad enough that they've taken care of him for so long, he doesn't want to ask.
So I told you about this. Um, it's this form of therapy where they film you talking about your problems or whatever, and then you go back and you watch yourself talking about your problems. Kind of a, a different form of therapy. Um, so that way you kind of probably hard but um, therapeutic obviously